That's the way you look in my eyes How I feel is beyond words can describe How you ignite this fire so deep inside Got me hot like the summer Happy holiday, single mom. And welcome back to Speaking for Life with Tamara, where we speak into the lives of women who are single parents. As the title indicates, an unbelievable Christmas, that is the goal for 2022. So I hope all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and memories are etched into the minds of your children forever. But now the time is here. It's December and it is full steam ahead. We are in the home stretch. I think we have what, about three weeks uh, away for Christmas? And it is our goal to make sure we are strategizing to make sure we have a successful Merry Christmas for our families. So I know we don't like to hear the B word, but you know, we have to discuss it. You know, shh, the budget. Uh, we have to be mindful of our budgets because moms, we want to make sure that we don't overextend ourselves for the holidays. You know, yes, Christmas is a big ordeal. Uh, it is the day for most of us of our Lord and Savior. I said, but, but we still know that we want to celebrate Christmas. A big part of that is the children and our gifts and family. So we just want to make sure that while we enjoying all of the festivities, that we're not overextending ourselves at the same time. So the goal is to have an unbelievable Christmas without stress and with anxiety, without anxiety. So let's go over a few things. Now, of course, some of these things, they're not new for you, but you know what? It is nice sometimes just to have a refresher or a reminder. There's things that my friends have shared with me who were also single moms. And of course, I put all these things in play. So the first thing, I don't know if you picked up your tree yet, but the prices are there. They're a little high this year. So um, and the sad part is some of them, the trees are smaller, but the price went up. So we went to Costco's first and I love a big Christmas tree. You know, it is just fun. And I love a fresh Christmas tree. But when I went up there and I looked at the trunks and I looked at the man and I said, this, these can't be the trees. And he said, well, you know, they're a little smaller this year. I said, no, they're a little smaller than they were last week. I said, the truck run you guys had last week, the trees were much bigger. They were much thicker and the trunks were bigger. And he said, well, if you go down to Home Depot, you're going to pay $80 for a tree and they're going to be smaller. And I said, well, you know what? Let's go, daughter. That's a chance we'll take. So here we go, trucking down to Home Depot, please. We got a beautiful tree. It's about six, seven, seven to eight feet. Um, and it was nice and it was full and it was fresh and it was $54.95. So, you know, needless to say, I was happy. They put that, tr that tree on top of that car, tied it down. We took it home and threw it in the garage and said, okay, we had other things to do today. We'll deal with it later. But it was a nice tree. So if you find that the trees are a little more expensive, please go to more than one lot to look at a tree if you're going to get a fresh tree. I said, now, if you need to get a smaller tree, and that is fine. Listen, all you need to do is put something underneath the stand to rise the tree up some so to come closer to the ceiling, look like it's a much bigger tree, and then wrap that skirt around that tree, and nobody will know anything different. So shop around for a tree. Don't just look at the first one. Give yourself a little time, and don't spend more than you have budgeted for your tree. So basically, that's it. Now, what about the ornaments? Because you can't have a tree without having some ornaments. Now, what I decided to do is I didn't go out and I said, I'm not buying any more tons of ornaments. I'm not going to do that. I have so much. I don't know where to store the ones that I have. I'm running out of room. So what I did is I just took, okay, last year, I think we had like Tiffany blue, silver and white. This year we decided we're just going to do all white. So we didn't have to spend any more money. I think I went to Hobby Lobby's. I think I spent a little under a hundred dollars and the majority of that went to a big sign that I wanted in front of the door. But I said I wasn't spending a lot of money because I had plenty of ornaments. So please look at what you have. And if you used a couple of colors last year, use one of them. If you use three last year, pull two of them. And you know what? And when you're taking the pictures, all they're going to see is something different. So don't go out and buy a whole bunch of ornaments if you don't have to just kind of use the same ones you had from the year prior or the year prior to that and just kind of change this color scheme and you're fine so now what about Christmas gifts now uh, I think I had mentioned before I have one daughter that's it and I generally will ask her what do you want for Christmas you know those days are gone and me going to the store buying tons of stuff for her I 
I'm not doing that anymore. She's 29. I don't need to do that. So I, what I will ask her though, what is the one thing? So she'll give me the one thing. And then I said, okay, give me a couple of small things, small, small <laughs> dollar amount things. Um, but things that she still needs and, you know, she loves, you know, makeup and all of that kind of stuff that most young women like that age. So got her gift, got her some small things. And I said, so she's fine. That might be helpful for the children as well, your children as well. You know, you might want to ask them. I think it's always nice that the kids open up if they can, if they can, at least one gift that you know that they really want it. And then you can get them some of the smaller things. But that's kind of a way of pulling the kids in and making sure they're excited about it. Because remember, we have been budgeting for this. Now, there may be some things that you think as a parent that they might need. And so you have a little, you know, room for that too. But at least you can get the one item that they want wanted um, on their Christmas list. So that'd be great. So then, um, you know, everybody kind of gets what a little bit of what they want. And of course, what mom says they need, which is most important. Now, don't, I wanted to say this because, you know, as you remember a couple of weeks ago, we had a list on a refrigerator. If I tell you how many names I have scratched off that list, I tone down that list because last year I really spent a lot of money. This year I'm really kind of zoning in on the, the nieces and the nephews and they're very young. So I'm kind of like honing in on them. I will still buy something for their parents, but it'll be much smaller than what I normally get. And that's fine because they do well. They have their own money, you know, so they'll be fine. But really cut down and I work remote, so I don't have to really worry about Christmas gifts for the office. But you know what? Even tame that down. I, I think a way to get around that is, is to buy Christmas cards. When you buy Christmas card, what? You pay, you know, about 10 bucks for some, some nice cards. But then you have a set maybe for, you know, for friends, you know, which can include some folks in your office. Um, you can do something small if you feel the need to, but I'm talking about people that you work with that are just like your friend, friends, friends, like your close friends, friends. But if not, I wouldn't even trip off of that. Give everybody a Christmas card. They know you appreciate it because listen, at the end of the day, everybody knows that you're a single parent and they know, you know, it, they're trying to budget it, but it's quite as it kept married. People are trying to budget too. So it's a different day and time. So don't worry about, you know, trying to, you know, what is so-and-so going to say, or I want to get them a gift, but I can't, you can't afford it now. You can do something during the, uh, the following year, you know, you, you got Valentine's Day, you got all of these other holidays. You don't have to get everything right now because everyone knows you have children and you're trying to make sure that you get your gifts for your children. And that's the most important thing. So don't don't feel bad that you can't shop for everybody you want to. No, them days are over. We're not doing that anymore. We're not stressing ourselves. We're not putting ourselves in a bind anymore. And then we can't pay the electric bill, the gas bill, the water bill, the car insurance. Oh, we're not doing that. That's no fun. And that's, you know what? Single mom, that is no way to live. We're not doing it because it's not necessary. So that's how we're going to do gifts this year. Now, moms, you know me. I'm going to get me a Christmas gift for myself. Yes, my daughter gets me gifts and yes, other people buy me gifts. But what I really want, I need to make sure that I get. No, it's not everything, but I did pick up <laughs> my Christmas gifts and they were delivered last week. So my daughter took them, grabbed them, took them upstairs and I'm sure probably will wrap them up and put them underneath the tree. But I was, I'm going to get me something that I want. And quite as it kept, there are two more things <laughs> that I want to get for myself to make sure that I have them. So moms, you deserve it. You've earned it. And if you know, you would like to have a little something underneath the tree for you, there is nothing wrong with that. You earned it. You deserve it. Have a little Santa Claus underneath the tree for you. Okay. I just thought about how that sound, you know, the Christmas gift, the other one's okay too, but let's just go with the Christmas gift. So you work hard and you deserve it. Now single moms, for Thanksgiving, I just wanted to share a little something with you. You know, things don't always go the way you plan. Stuff happens. And you know what? I'm a planner. I plan, 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 organize. But you know what? Sometimes as they say, stuff happens, stuff happens. So let me share a couple of things with you. It's kind of funny. So for I ended up hosting for Thanksgiving unplanned. My sister said, no, 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 you're cooking this year. You're not getting away with it. So you're cooking. I said, okay. 
it, not a problem. Um, then folks were wondering, well, can she cook? I was like, yes, I can cook. My aunt taught me how to cook. I know how to cook. So I made the traditional things because, you know, I'm a very traditional lady. So I, I did my dressing, my greens and um, the mac and cheese. Now, I was still working uh, Thanksgiving uh, up until Thanksgiving till we had Thanksgiving and what that Friday off. I was still working. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of extra stuff. So, yes, family members were bringing their what they were going to bring. But, you know, the still the host to me is kind of still responsible for, you know, making sure that everything is pretty much there. <laughs> I picked up the phone. I called um, the cobbler factory. <laughs> which is a small business, which I was excited to do because I always like to support small uh, business, but it's also a black owned business. They've been around for years. I called them up. So I do. Don't tell me to turn in my black car, but I don't like peach cobbler, but I buy it anyway because everybody else loves it. But I bought the peach cobbler, the mixed berry pie, <laughs> I bought some tri tip. <laughs> I bought a slab of rib. So there was more than enough food. And the reason why I tell you that is, moms, if you're still working and you're working up until the 11th hour, don't stress yourself out. If there's a part of that meal that you can go ahead and purchase, if you can put it in the budget. So um, it saved me time. It saved me everything. All I had to do is go at a certain time and pick it up, bring it home, warm it up, and we were good to go. And it was absolutely delicious. So, you know, don't try to be superwoman. We're not superwoman. Superwoman. We're just women trying to, you know, out here trying to make it, trying to take care of our children and give them the best life and make sure we're creating wonderful human beings in the process. So um, if you are running short on time, go ahead and order, you know, half of your meal because of that. And because all of that was ready and I didn't have to worry about it. When guests got here, I was done. The table was formally set. They, I had hors d'oeuvres already on the table while we were warming up food. Gave a couple of responsibilities for certain things in the house. Basically minor, you take care of the rolls, you take care of putting the meats on the platter. And we were ready to go on time because, hey, I'm a planner. I'm a prepper. That's what I do. I cannot stand to be unorganized, even though stuff happens. But stuff happens. And so I'm going to share this with you to say, you know, you can plan and you could you can prepare. But sometimes things are just unbelievable. Things are going to happen. Don't trip. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, do what you got to do and keep it pushing. So I had a really nice, I mean, a nice big, it was a, not a card table, but like a six foot table. And I had it in my living room and it was all beautifully done. My daughter had set it up with several fork spoons, all the proper stuff, everything set in place. So I said, hmm, once everything that I'm, I'm talking about completely set up. So I said, okay, let me just move the table over just a little bit. You know, I'm not a perfectionist. I don't claim to be a perfectionist, but you know, I have to have symmetry because it'll drive me crazy. So I'm like, oh, I can see this and not this much. I want to be able to see the poinsettias and everything. And I want them to be even. I pulled the table. Listen, I'm talking about inches. Well, I thought I had secured the legs. I thought they were locked in. I mean, I have dealt with these tables for church events, you name it. I, you know, I know click, click, click. I thought I had clicked them in place. You guys, when I moved the table, it was like, it was, <laughs> it was like a cartoon. Everything started sliding and all I could do was try to hold one side of the table. And all I heard was dishes, click, click, glass, click, click, click. And I was like, the first thing in my mind, is like, okay, I, there's nothing I can do. I can't catch it. It is too much on the table. The, the table was fully set. And, uh, and I said, okay, do I have enough extra dishes? Can I go to the store and buy anything that to replace anything that was broke? I could not believe it. <laughs> my daughter came in. She's like, mom, what did you do? And I was like, I just tried to move it over a couple of inches. I just tried to move it. I don't know what happened. And so needless to say, <laughs> I called my hero and I said, I did this and I don't know what happened table. He said, it's not a big deal. You just didn't lock it. I said, I did. I checked. He said, no. You, he said, it has happened to the best of them. He said, turn it over. And he said, and put the camera on it. And I did it. And it was, they were not. None of them were locked in place. So I'm telling you this. I can laugh afterwards. Thank God I didn't. Really, only I think. Did anything break? 
I think a plate, one of the plates, everything else had landed surprisingly on my hardwood floor and it didn't break. Um, I think we, I lost the plate and that was fine because I had, you know, set. I had another set. So I didn't have to worry about that. So we had to wipe everything down, wash everything off, put it back on the table and everything was set. But it was, well, it wasn't funny at the time, but it was funny afterwards. But anyway, I tell you that to say, Sometimes things are not going to go the way you plan. Don't worry about it. You know what? Just keep it pushing. You don't want that to mess up your whole celebration. You know, life happens. It does. You know, you can laugh about it later, but you know, at the moment, it just seems like it's a major crisis. But when it does, don't get upset. Don't yell. Don't fuss. Just keep it pushing and keep going. So, um, so that was my little funny, you know, I don't care how much we plan and prep, you know, stuff is going to happen. And finally, I just wanted to say this. This is now we into the what the last three weeks before uh, before Christmas. And we had shared, you know, a while ago that kind of put a little schedule in place for doing things. So, you know, my my recommendation is that you don't do everything all at once, because what you kind of want to do is schedule, you know, things out for the family because we want them to enjoy the entire holidays. And plus, I assume it's been a while, but they're gonna be on Christmas break. So you kind of want to stretch, you know, the holiday season out. So you do your tree one day, you know, and then hopefully when you're doing your tree, you got a little something I told you, some Pillsbury, whatever, make your cookies, slice them, put them in the oven, or whatever it is that your kids like to snack on, you know, to kind of make an event. Um, I went and bought a, um, what, a gingerbread man? about, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, so he's all put together just so they can do the decorations or you can do the house and that gives the kids something else to do. So, um, but yeah, so the going out, getting the tree is one thing, decorating it that day or the next day. Um, don't forget to check your community to see what they have going on. I still enjoy, there's an area not too far from me um, that I still go and we, uh, in the car and we drive through to see the houses. They are outstanding. And it just, it's so many people, but I'm gonna tell you something. It takes about mm, 20 minutes to go through, but we may be in line in our car. <laughs> for like a couple of hours because people come from all over to see the houses and stuff, but it's still fun and we love it. Excuse me. <coughs> so don't forget to check your community. They may also have a parade, a Christmas parade, so that it gives you something else to do. Maybe the kids have got something leading up to school. They got those kind of events. So I'm just saying kind of stretch everything out. So you're not trying to do it all at the same time. So that way you guys get to enjoy the whole the whole holiday instead of one day just trying to do everything so i think i would be remiss so let me just be as i get ready to close let me just say this um you we always think we have the toughest you know we are always met with the challenges but there are always there are always other people who are having sometimes even more struggles than we're having but it just feels like it's just us but it's not so if you can you see another single mom or you know your children know of another uh, child in their school or something. And if you can do just maybe one thing, it may not be a gift. You may not have the money, but if you do, OK, that's good. You can always get a um, a gift card. You can always take, uh, you know, some cookies or something over there. Um, you know, if somebody have like an extra turkey or something like that, whatever, you can take and give it to, you can give it and share. Um, we did that. I didn't know, but it ended up giving a um, couple of meals. And I was like, yes, please, I'm on me. Take that food because I am really trying to wash my weight. And so I was like, I don't need my house to be left over with any of that stuff. So please, please take it to whoever may need it and whoever could enjoy the meal. So in the midst of the holiday season, make sure no matter, you know, what's going on in our lives, always try to remember and send a hand out to help someone else at the same time. You know, that's what we do. And to me, there is no greater joy. There's no greater joy when you can see that somebody really appreciate the little, it could be just a little, the little extra things. All right, I got some extra t-shirts. I found this. So here, I'm just going to throw them in a bag. You know, you can go to the dollar store and get a, a nice Christmas bag with a bow and put that tissue paper and say, hey, it's not a lot, but 
here, I was thinking about you guys. So always try to, if you can, lend a helping hand to someone else. It could be a senior, um, take a plate of meal, a nice meal over there, and they will have, you know, that way you, even if they're going to their family's house, they have a little something for the next day for some leftovers. So always try to make sure that we are always helping each other because you know what? I believe that's what we're called to do. So I think that's all I have for uh, this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, um, as I am trying to build a, uh, my subscribers, please like this video, hit the notification bell so you'll know when I'm uploading a, via, uh, a video and please subscribe until then. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, everyone. And I cannot wait to bring you another message next week. Thank you and bye.